blessing or, or that could be a feature or a curse, right? Um, depending on what you want. But if this is the input, it's a great solution. Okay? All right, um, and I'm going to show you other, other solutions for how to do skew axes uh, in a minute. Um, but uh, first, let's look at uh, elliptical gears. So, so first of all, uh, gears don't have to be circles. They can be ellipses um, for very bizarre applications if you want. Um, first thing you'll notice right off the bat is the, uh, you know, this definitely does not obey the fundamental law of gearing. Um, and sometimes you, sometimes you don't want uh, to have, you know, for a constant angular velocity input, a constant angular velocity output. Sometimes, you know, you, you want the, the angular velocity to be fluctuating with some desired thing. So you intentionally want to violate the um, fundamental law of gearing. And in this case, um, you know, you can see the pitch point is kind of oscillating back and forth here. And that means the radii between the ratio of those are changing, so the angular velocity ratio is changing. And, and so if you put a constant omega-2 in here, this one's going to speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. Okay? At a very specific rate, which if you want, then great, use elliptical gears. Okay, and you can look up that ratio online. Um, these are uh, nautilus gears. They're kind of mesmerizing to watch. Um, but they definitely also violate the fundamental law of gearing. You can see the pitch point kind of moves up and then immediately skips down in a discontinuous way. Like, boop, it warps down. So it goes up slowly and then warps down. Um, and uh, um, you can imagine if one gear is rotated with a constant angular velocity, the other will slowly speed up and then abruptly become slow again. Um, and, and so it's just, if you want that, then that's what you'd want to use is Nautilus gears. Okay. There's also, I don't know why you'd ever want to use these other than to mesmerize your friends, uh, but there's square gears. You, you can be very clever uh, with gear design. You'd be surprised what you can make work, okay? So say you want uh, now two axes. So, 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 so far we've got two axes of rotation that are parallel. That's the most common with gears, and you, you know how to do that. Uh, we've done intersecting gears, or, sorry, intersecting um, axes of rotation and those are for uh, bevel gears, right? And, and then you've got skew that are 90 degree skew, meaning the, the lines of their axes that don't intersect or are parallel, but they're also 90 degrees apart. Uh, we can do helical gears, we can do worm gears for those. But now say you want it to be skew, but not necessarily 90 degrees. You want a different you know, angle between the skew lines. Um, well, then you'd, you'd really want to use uh, circular hyperboloid gears or hyperboloidal gears, okay? And uh, depending on their, um, you know, uh, the relationship of, of these teeth, uh, how, how vertical or how angled they are within the circular hyperboloid, um, you, can, you can change the angle of the axes of rotation. But that's how you would get them to mesh. And... Um, uh, click on this uh, demonstration here and you can fix different uh, parameters of these and see how they change the angle. It's, it's kind of cool to watch. So I encourage you to click on that and play with that. Okay, so with that, um, let's take just a quick break.